Hi, welcome to Life Wisdom with Ed Langen, the place for co to come for practical and spiritual information to help you move forward on your path, plus life wisdom from the guides. On this spiritual talk show, we talk about everything from self-love and creating your own reality to quantum physics and what your soul wants you to know. I'm your host, Ed Langen. I'm a psychic channel for the Ascended Ones. I'm a master life coach, a law of attraction expert, a spiritual teacher, and other than that, I'm just a, a regular dude, <laughs> whatever that might be. So welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, in this episode, I have a special guest. I have Yvette Nashi Lokatz, who is the um, founder of Star Nations, and we're going to talk to her in just a minute. In the first part of the, uh, the show, I'm going to talk with her about um, spiritual path. I'm going to interview her. We're going to talk about some fun things. And then in, we're going to hear about her journey. And then the second part of the show, Meshi is going to stick around and both of us are going to channel each of my guides and her spiritual team to answer questions for you. So you can ask questions for from the guides. You can, uh, you can write in the questions there and we will answer them. Good. I'd like to thank everybody who is liking and sharing all of our shows, all of us from Star Nations really appreciate that. And you're spreading the information so that people who are searching for it can find it. And from all of us at Star Nation, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, Marge is here for you, as per usual. She is flying the plane and I'm going to have her um, bring Neshi in as soon as she can. And we will uh, we will go from there. And there you are. Hi. Hi. Bonjour. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm going doing good. <laughs> good. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So I was just thanking for everybody for liking and sharing um, all of our shows and, and everything that we do for, for Star Nations. And I appreciate that. And the other thing that I want to let the viewers know is this month's issue of the magazine. Let me see if I can do that. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, yep. has been published and uh, it's a beautiful cover. So that is also available. And as we're waiting for a few more people to drop in and say, hello, Polly Joe is there? Hello, Polly Joe. <laughs> She's saying we match. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do in many ways, we do. Um, oh my God. I want to remind everybody that once a month, we have a, uh, a meditation for peace, love, harmony, and healing. And we ask that you meditate with us for 10 minutes from 7 till 7.10 Eastern time. That is our time, but you can adjust it to whatever time yours is. And our next one is Monday, November 25th. And just from 7 p.m. to 7.10. So 10 minutes, just meditate, join the energy, send it out there to the world, and... Um, Let's send a positive wave and continue to do that. And we do that once a month. Excellent. Good. So before we get started, I'm going to um, read your bio so that people know all about you. All right. All right. That's good. I'm going to turn my volume up so I can hear you a little better. There we go. Yvette Neshi Lokatz is the CEO of Star Nations Organization, LLC, which includes Star Nations Publishing, Star Nations Magazine, Star Nations Radio Network, and Star Nations Academy. She is the host of Star Nations Communications from Home, a weekly live stream show on Tuesday nights, the co-host of Nature Adventures, the last Wednesday of each month, and the co-host of Living in Two Worlds, the last Thursday of each month. Neshi is a tribal member of the Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation, with Ho-Chunk Nation and Yaqui descent. She was raised in the tradition of the Ho-Chunk and the Potawatomi, I hope I'm saying that right, cultures. Neshi is a publisher, drum maker, and medicine dress dancer. Neshi consciously walks the medicine path and is committed to service of her community. She holds a BA in psychology and an MA in management and organizational behavior. And other than that, she's just a regular person. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> other than that, I eat my cereal with 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 uh, organic milk too. 
Ah, there you go. Good, good. I, I hope I, I said all the names of your tribes correctly. I, I did the best I could there. Um, probably goofed them up a little, but anyway. So how are you today? I'm doing really well. I've been looking forward to this all day. Yes, me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So one of the things that that comes up a lot for people when they're talking to me about spiritual path is they tell me I'm off my path. Mm. And yeah. I remind them that that's impossible. That's right. And they go, oh, wait a minute, it's really hard, it's bad. And, and I explain to them that, you know, some days your spiritual path is walking along a beautiful beach where everything's fine and wonderful. And some days it's walking down a nice road. And then other days it's walking through briar patches. Or other days it's climbing a sheer cliff face. And then I remind them that although walking on the beach or the nice path is fun, you're not necessarily learning anything. You're not, you're not gaining anything from that point. So right. um, I'm sure you have similar experiences with people talking to you about their spiritual path. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I do. And I also have people saying that I don't hear anything. I don't feel anything. I don't think my guides are even talking to me. I don't think I have guides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, yeah. and, and how do you respond to that? Well, you know, I, I like to try to remind them that um, this is our spiritual life. That's our everyday life mm -hmm. is um, is more than what has been written in scripts for Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, that, you know, that we're not we're, we're not all going to be clairvoyant in the way that we're watching a movie kind of thing. Mm. Um, there are some people who who have information come to them that way. Right. But we're all very unique and individual and in how we receive information from our spiritual guides. Okay. You know, and then we, we all have them. Can't be here without them. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you mean that the, the screen doesn't start to get a little fuzzy and everything and you don't hear the music cue in your head go, Oh, my guides are going to talk to me. I hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know the, how, how the angels, you know how the, the the herald angels come in, kind of thing. No, no. Ed, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're being silly, but um, no. I think I think they get the point. You know, it's it's yeah. it's uh, everybody mm -hmm. has guides, and mm -hmm. as you do your work, you will be able to connect with them more, and you'll you'll see the the. The synchronicities you'll see the signs and you'll be able to figure that out so cool excellent so i have um i have some questions for you no you ready i'm ready <laughs> when did I'm you you're not yes you are <laughs> when were you first aware of your abilities when when did the guides start making themselves more known to you oh my gosh you know i when i read that question i thought well <laughs> when when I was quite young, when I was quite young, I knew I was hearing voices and and people talking to me like they were telling me a story. Oh, um, okay. yeah, um, you know, and I'd look and there wouldn't be anybody there, <laughs> kind mm. of thing. I was really young. I want to say like seven or eight. Oh, okay. Um, and, but it wasn't until I was really like in my late twenties or early thirties that it was I was consciously aware of it, hmm. which is a big difference, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. I was doing it as a, a young kid, in, you know, seven, eight years old, but through music. So mm -hmm. I had no idea that that was channeling because I thought that's the way everybody played music. I didn't. I didn't understand that. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. Were your abilities welcomed by your family? Well, yeah, actually, yes. Um, now, my family, my mom's side of the family, uh, my grandfather, my Misho, was a leader in his Native American religion, which mm -hmm. was called the Dream Drum or the Big Drum. Okay. And so, um, dreams and dream interpretation was huge in my family. Um, I thought everybody sat down at the breakfast table and talked about their dreams and have their mom, you know, say, well, it could be this or it could be that, you know, and, and spirit was not, um, 
what wasn't, you know, we, we were encouraged to talk about it. Right, right. right. Now, you know, we also grew up with a great deal of fear around that, though, too. Mm. You know, is yeah. that uh, the bad medicine stuff, you know? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we had to be very, very careful of who we talked to about it and um, and how we we expressed ourselves. Hmm. OK, that's that's interesting, because yeah. that was, one of my questions was about the fact that that spirituality and these types of things are more part of your culture um, yeah. where and since you grew up in that culture, it's hard for you to imagine what it would be like not to. A, you, you know yeah. what I mean? So it, it's hard to say, you know, what the difference is, but um, right. that it that is interesting. So did you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, did you not talk about it with your friends when you went to school or anything like that? Or was, was that, you know? Right. Right. Um, we had to really talk about learning how to discern at a really young age about um, who is open to it and who's not. But, you know, there was also a time because this we're talking about this is in the 60s. Mm -hmm. right? And so there was still a very um, strict rules about what you share with people, non-native people. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so you never, we never talked about giving tobacco. We never talked about any of the ceremonies. We never talked about our native name. Um, no, it was, it was a very strict rule. Okay. And so it wasn't until I learned about feng shui actually. So that would have been, that would have been like the mid nineties, nineties, hmm. okay. late nineties, something like that. Um, that I started thinking, well, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, um, cause I wasn't sharing it with anybody. I mean, I right. used, I, I, some of the blogs that I wrote about this is like, you know, for a native American to come out of the spiritual closet, mm. you know, cause I grew up with it. I was right. still giving tobacco and things like that. People didn't know what I was doing. Right. Didn't know anything about my beliefs. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know how hard it is to come out of the spiritual closet. So, <laughs> um, right. Marge, Marge and I, our anniversary for teaching um, was in October. So we've just started our seventeenth year of teaching oh, workshops. Wow. And wow. well, thank you, thank you. In in the beginning years, um, I would have friends who were psychics and mediums, and they would come mm -hmm. to me and say, "You know, Ed, there's a whole lot more going on in those workshops than you're letting on to." And I go, "Yeah, shh." Don't Tell <laughs> it's a secret, you know, um, mm -hmm. just, again, because of how I was brought up and, and you know, right. that, was, that was all, you know, um, which I find interesting because I think someone counted um, 374 metaphysical uh, things listed in the Bible or something like that, you know, from the burning bush to, you know, and, and yet we're, yeah. we're, you know, and, and regular people talking to angels and all this other stuff. And yet we're afraid right. to say, you know, I have this ability, you know, <laughs> so. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, I can remember in the eighties when we would talk about spirit or something like that. Now these are the people that would have been the, you know, baby boomers, right? Mm -hmm. They would look around. If you were in a restaurant, they would look around to see who was sitting around them you know, before they would actually start sharing something. And a lot of it was kind of in code. So you really had to follow the conversation right. to figure out what sometimes what they were talking about. Right. Mm. And the reason why they did that is because they were trying, they were self protecting. Right. right. So that um, certain people wouldn't hear that kind of conversation that they were having. Right. So that was in the eighties. Now, if we, we fast forward to the late nineties, the early two thousands, walking through a restaurant, and just hearing snatches of conversation as you're walking to your table, people were talking about energy. I heard the word shaman several times, you know, right. and it was like, wow, I think we got a change going on here. There's a shift has mm -hmm. already occurred Yeah. when people are talking about it very openly. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. That was in Madison, Wisconsin. Wow. That's a very liberal city. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Very open city. Cool. Um, but that was that was in the early 2000s. Hmm. That wasn't that long ago. Right. Right. Years. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't had any experiences like that because I tend to travel with my own 
people. So we're, you know what I mean? So, we're, you know, like I'm with Polly Joe or whatever, we're talking about that anyway. So, you know, right. it's like um, someone says, well, my Facebook feed is only this. Well, of course it's your feed. So that's going to match your energy. So I understand right. that, but that's, that's cool that you yeah. experienced that. That's good. Yeah. So how do you think that relates to the spiritual path? Oh my. Well, <laughs> Curveball. You know, yeah, well, <laughs> the thing is, is that I've always known that I was more than just the physical body, yeah. right? That that spirit resides with us, within us, mm -hmm. right? I've always known that. Cool. Um, and so when we're talking about the spiritual path, uh, to me, that's our life path. That's yeah. our existence here. Right, right. Um, yeah. And so when, when, when I'm teaching or when I'm talking or writing about it, it really has more to do with um, your soul contract. What are you, what are you here to do? Mm -hmm. Right. And cleaning up the debris that blocks, right. blocks you from proceeding down that path. That is your soul contract. Why you're here, what okay. you're supposed to be learning. Right. Right. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. So we're in agreement. Your life path and your spiritual path are the same thing because we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, not physical beings having a spiritual experience. So our path is our path, whether we call it spiritual or not. It's all the, it's all the same thing. We already said yeah. it's possible to get off your path. Sometimes it'll be more challenging than others, but that's how we grow. So, yeah. okay, good. What is the red road? The red road. Well, for me, now see the medicine wheel, because that comes from the medicine wheel information. Okay. The medicine wheel has many different interpretations to it, depending on what nation you're speaking to. Now there's 568 federally recognized nations, tribal nations here in the United States. Wow. Um, many, many more across Turtle Island, which is all of North America. And um, each nation has a slight difference or variation in their interpretation of it. So you're going to hear mine today. <laughs> you're not okay. going to. I'm not know. speaking for all native uh, natives out there. Okay. Um, all right. So um, the red road is the road that goes from the south to the north on the medicine wheel, and that is the road where we share our wisdom with our community. So we're in service to our community. Um, and so we are there to assist others in their journey, right? And so how are we doing that? Because it all happens simultaneously, right? Is that our walk from the east to the west is the blue road, also known okay. as the black road, right? Okay. And that is our physical life here on earth as a spirit. And so okay. that's the road that we have all of our life lessons and um, all of our growth happens there. Okay. And we're also okay. walking for balance between our mental mind and our emotions. And so we're learning a heck of a lot about it on, on, on that path. Um, and so once we learn our lessons, our life lessons, and we have the opportunity to, um, use that knowledge that we just gained we learn how to master things through that knowledge that's our wisdom that's our medicine okay and so then we get to take that medicine or that wisdom in service to others so it can be as simple as just sharing your life story listening to other people and their 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 problems sometimes and you might say, you know, I, something similar happened to me and this is what I did. Or this is I have I have somebody that you m might be able to help you, you know, um, that kind of stuff. And so we're using our gifts. We're using our wisdom and we're providing providing a service to our community. That's the red road. OK, wow. That's that's OK. So yeah. um, not knowing that, I thought maybe the Red Road was in reference to spiritual path, but we've established that everything is spiritual path. So in, in some terms, yes, it is. In other terms, it isn't. Now, um, mm -hmm. obviously, everybody has a choice to do that. Do, do we find, do you find that there are individuals who choose not to do that? 
um, it's a choice. Okay. It's a choice because we have free will, right? Because we oh, have yeah. free will. Yes. Yeah. And so um, sometimes, sometimes people think that they're not traveling the red road. Hmm. But in actuality, they are because right. even if you just stop to hold the door open, for you, um, even even if you send a birthday card to someone, okay, okay, right? you're you're doing service to someone else, okay, right? okay. you're bringing okay. some some happiness into their life or right. um, a sense of um, they somebody acknowledged them. Right? Hmm. Hmm. That's walking the red road. Every okay. month, every month when we write our columns, write our, our articles, right. and it's published in the magazine. We're walking the red road together because we're using, utilizing our gifts and our wisdom and our experience and sharing that with our readers. And so every month um, after we're published, I send out an email to all of the writers thanking you guys. Yes. And every month I thank you for walking the red road with me. Right, right. Yeah. So, so some people wouldn't, know, wouldn't see that as walking the red road, but we are. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you for clearing clearing that up because yeah. I I had I had knew it had some something to do with spirit <laughs> service, but I wasn't sure what it was. So thank you. That's that's I, I like that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Ready. Ready. Why did you start Star Nations? How and why? <laughs> where, did, where, where did that come from? How and why? How and why? Well, you know, we actually, the very first show that we had was in February of 2013. And that was a um, internet radio show. Okay. 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 But it actually happened well before February 2013. Right. Um, I was actually down here. I, I was working out and, um, and I used my workout and I still do as kind of a, a walking meditation. Cool. And I was having a with my spiritual team and I was I was saying something like this to them like you know I really want to be able to reach more souls um, and being able to be of assistance and so how can I do that how can I do that in a way that is comfortable and um, it doesn't exhaust me right and so a couple actually it was only like three weeks later I get a telephone call asking me if I wanted to to join uh, soul's journey uh, radio network oh, okay and I thought, oh okay and so I did and I had a show and that was um, 2011 I think okay no I'm sorry 2009 that was in 2009 oh okay yeah all right. So, you know, we had shows, we had shows, we had shows. Well, there came a time when customer service was lacking. <laughs> I would show up for a show and my producer didn't show up. Wow. You know? Um, yeah. And so um, I started doing some research because I figured, you know, if they can do internet radio, so can I. Yeah. And so I started researching and gathered information. And I remember cooking supper and my husband coming home and I said, you know what? I think I'm going to start my own internet radio network. And he goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, that was, um, that was in early 2012. Yeah. And I was in Michigan. Um, I was participating. I was invited to be a part of a 2012 uh, ceremony that was taking place on December 17th. I think it was. Of, of 2012 and it was in that that time frame that we started we started the actual yep we're going to do this and i remember many kansmen many kansmen was there right and so we were going over what to call this network okay and yeah and i told the story about wisconsin effigy mounds hmm. why that was my, I was hearing my guides, right. my team right. telling me, tell the story about the effigies. And okay. So I did. And I, and part of that story is that in order to really see the full story that the effigy mounds are telling, you actually have to see them from above. Okay. Right. Because in Wisconsin, they're all over our state. Hmm. Okay. So how do you how do you get above all of these effigy mounds to see the full story? Okay. 
especially when when they're dated, they're a thousand years old or right. older. Right, right. So how do you get above them? Right. So mm -hmm. they're actually celestial maps, and so, wow. <laughs> and oh. so that's how, that's how we actually got to the name. Okay. Incarnations. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That that and many native nations here in the United States, um, and actually probably worldwide, I'm going to add worldwide, okay. is that there are many creation stories that say that we come from the stars. Right. Okay. Yeah. Indigenous people coming from the stars and who, who are indigenous people? We all are. Right. Right. Yep. For, to, to some continent. Yes. You're indigenous yep. to some continent. Yep. It some, might yep. not be this one. Right. 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 It yep. might be the European continent or Ireland or Russia or, you know. Right, right. We're indigenous to somewhere. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because one of my questions for you was, was star nations in reference to ETs? So I guess in some ways it is, but maybe in not. In some ways it is. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, Yeah. cool. Except, you know, ETs... That's good. That could be a show all in itself. Yes. Um, is that what, what really is an ex extraterrestrial? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's all in perspective. There's, there's, uh, there's a good friend of mine, one of my sisters, Teresa, she's, she's very fascinated with, with alien sightings and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, how do you know you haven't already been in contact with one? How do you know that you haven't sat across the table and had coffee with someone? Right. Right. You know, she yeah. goes, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, unless they tell you, you know, yeah. oh, by the way, I'm Palladian or whatever it might know. I'm, 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 I'm Syrian. Yeah, right. Yeah, whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's interesting. Well, you know, and another another thing is that, you know, where was your soul? Con where was your soul conceived? Good question. You know, and I did ask that question. I asked that question to um, an esoteric astrologer years and years ago, and she did a reading for me. And she says, "Well, you are certainly um, Syrian," and this is and, and gave me a whole bunch of information about it. You know, and it made a whole lot of sense to me. Wow. Okay. Um, okay right? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, Sirius is the dog star. Yes, it is. Okay. It's the color. <laughs> it's the color of blue. <laughs> it's gone. Okay, good, good. Throat chakra, all that. Archangel Michael, cool, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Roberta has a question here, and it says, "Is the airspace over the mounds protected?" Oh, that's a good question, Bobby. And that's then a good it question. says, "If not, could we, could we more explore them with drone footage?" I bet oh, with I bet she could with her new drone. Uh -huh. Now, can you do video from your new drone? Yes, I can. Oh, cool. yes, I can. Now, my my drone isn't um, isn't high definition. Oh, okay. By any means, it it um, it is a drone that that is only a few hundred dollars, and it's something that I can learn. Okay. How to maneuver, and if I crash it, it's not going to be a two thousand dollar drone. Right. <laughs> Okay. You know, right. so I'm I'm learning right now to and to be a drone pilot and okay uh, yeah right. and actually Bobby Bobby that is one of the reasons why I wanted to drone for the last couple of years is because I wanted to be able to fly over um, sacred sites so that we can see them from another perspective. Cool. Oh, I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing that. Yeah. So, yeah. do you have the the hula hoops set up in the, in the backyard for you to practice flying the drones through? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not. Nice. I was getting. I was. I'm just. I'm still trying to get the the vertical and the horizontal. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of eye hand coordination, and when you when you have bifocals. Oh, okay. It's not I, exactly yeah. the easiest thing to do. Right, right, and I'm sure George is trying to help you too, right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, at first it scared. At first it scared him, and then right. when I landed it. Um, Paul had him on, on lead and he lunged for the, the drone and I thought, oh my gosh, he's going to bite it. You know, no, what he did, he went over and he was sniffing it and then he licked it and then he went and sat down and he goes, okay, it's safe. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. He was checking it out to see what it was. Checking it out. Right. Right. Funny. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh my gosh. 
I just remembered something. Marge asked me to put the Star Nations magazine. Oops. Right. Information right. There. Okay. Good. Yeah. So the the uh, we'll we'll do that again while you do that. I will hold this up. The uh, the November issue has been published and it has this beautiful cover. There we go. There you can see it, and um, it is now currently available. And Neshi is going to put the. Uh, the link into the notes there into the comments so that you guys can find it so that you can subscribe to the this wonderful magazine that, that Neshi writes in and I write in um, quarterly and Polly Joe writes in and Maureen Mann writes in and so there's lots of wonderful 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 stuff in there so and um, Roberta is also putting it in the in the comments there that uh, uh, about a road trip so <laughs> with the drone <laughs> So he's okay. already planning that. You better learn how to pilot <laughs> that thing. <laughs> well, see, um, Bob, Bobby doesn't live that far from me. She lives okay. um, maybe 30, 40 minutes, something like that. Oh, okay. And so we have a few, we have a few Star Nations community members that are, are actually within driving, comfortable driving distance. And so, yeah, we have talked a, a little bit about that and getting together for tea or something, too. So, oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. So I heard you met you met a few people, community members at the expo. Yes. So um, Polly Joe was there, and Maureen was also there. And um, it's interesting. I took a, a business class. I don't know, probably four or five years ago now, and there was only. 13 of us in the class or 14 of us in the class. And I am still working and in touch with at least eight to 10 of them. And one of them was Polly Joe. And that's, that's wow. how, we, that's, that's how the, 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 you know, the, the, the string, the, the, the web puts us all mm -hmm. together. And um, Polly Joe lives about an hour and 45 minutes west of where we are. And mm -hmm. Maureen lives probably, I think Maureen lives further north. So Maureen is about 45 minutes an hour away from us also. So okay. we're not, not quite as close as, as your little group there, but um, Maureen mm -hmm. also works with Polly Joe. And so yeah. Polly Joe and Maureen were at Polly Joe's booth um, over the weekend and okay. I was at mine. So um, you yeah. have three, three representatives from Star Nation. The big well, I also, in New England. I, also, I also heard we had some community members there too. That's oh, oh, by oh, oh. both of you, both you and Polly Joe at your booths. Oh, good. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, excellent. Yes. Yeah, um, excellent. Yeah. The the expo for me is is sort of a a, a flash. I read uh, twenty six people on Saturday, and I read okay. ten people on Sunday. Oh, uh, we met Lynn. There we go. Polly Joe is saying yeah. we met Lynn. Cool. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. um, then I had a talk for an hour. Um, a, mm -hmm. a wonderful talk. I had almost a hundred people in the room, and then it was time to go. Oh. So I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a blur to me, but it was it was fun. And a lot of people get to see Marge. So they, they don't know oh. what Marge looks like. So they get to meet Marge. You have to, <laughs> you have to come to the events to see Marge. You'll never see her on the, on the video. <laughs> Just by accident once. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Good. Yeah. So you teach a drum making class. Yeah, I do. I'm a and drum maker. I've, seen, I've seen pictures of it from then. It looks really, really cool. I am. I'm sorry you are so far away because I'm. But we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. I have an ocean drum that I bought that's full of marbles, and you you. Oh, yeah, yeah. those are nice. But well, mm -hmm. they're not as cool as the ones you make. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Oh my gosh. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I've been making drums since um, two thousand three or four, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in the generation that I grew up in, um, in the culture that I grew up in, um, women weren't allowed to touch drums, oh, much less make a drum, right? Huh. And so, yeah, yeah. And so <clears throat> it, one of the um, spirits that are on my spiritual team is the drum mother. And um, back in 2002, when I made my very first drum, um, was the first time that she actually came in and I could feel her around me and showing me how to do this and how to do that, right? And so I was asked to teach a drum making workshop by actually Teresa, my, one oh. of my sisters, way oh. back when. And um, I turned her down like three times. Um, 
because the person that she had to teach the class had backed out and she had all these people signed up for it. And so she, and the fourth time she asked me, I said, okay, I've never done this before. And so I made 10 drums wow. and drums. Cool. I invested quite a bit of money into, into that um, so that I could learn how to make that. And, and I intentionally broke lacing. So I learned how to repair cool. them cool. and yep. yeah. So it is really a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. um, the drum represents the entire universe. And when you make a drum, you're literally taking seemingly separate pieces. Right. It's like alchemy and bringing it together. And there's a spirit that, that resides in, in each drum. And so you're literally giving birth to this. You're like the creator. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah very similar to that and so it really is also shows a lot about your current life um and how centered or not centered you are um yeah it's a it's a very it's a very um intrinsic process hmm. and uh, yeah yeah i enjoy it i i only do uh, a couple drum making workshops a year now just so that i keep my skills up just like i only do a couple of space clearings a year okay. just to keep my skills up um and so my next drum making workshop is in, well, there's one planned in June in Michigan. Um, I need to do the promotions, get the, the pictures um, pulled together so we can start promoting that one. And, and I'm going to be in actually Massachusetts. Yes. At the I'll end of there. May. The <laughs> screen up there for a while. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, and so we're, we haven't actually finalized the, yeah, save the date, May there 29th through the 31st. Uh, we haven't finalized exactly what's going to happen, um, but drum making is definitely high on the docket. And so okay. for those that okay. have been wanting to make a drum with me from the East Coast, I'll be in your neck of the woods at the end of May. Cool. And we can comfortably take 14. Okay. 14. Okay. Well, we might be uncomfortable because you might have more takers than that. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to do a couple days, <laughs> a couple okay. days then. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, I also in the pictures saw that people um, write something on the, uh, write their intentions yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. really cool. Yes. Um, well, actually, it's it's a, a way to be able to use your intuition. Right. And we use divination cards. Um, I have several different decks. And so they have to use their intuition. They're all in bags. You can't see what they are. Oh, um, okay. So they have to use their intuition to see which bag has the cards that will tell them uh, the okay. medicine that their drum is going to carry. OK. So they yeah. have and so then they then, then they have to draw the card right, okay. out of that particular deck and then they have to read the information and whatever jumps out at them or stands very prominent to them, not the entire, you know, write up for that card, but whatever um, stands out to them, the word or the phrase, okay. that's what they write on the inside. Now, the reason why I even started doing that is because um, when you get, when you get a, um, people together, they tend to like to chit chat and to, you know, and share stuff, you know, and, and pretty soon, you know, they're talking about other things other than drum making. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And so the car the cards were a way to help them focus. Good. Okay. Hold their focus on their drum because everything that we're feeling, thinking is being embedded into the creation of that drum. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you want to be focused and, right. and right. intentional and yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You, you want to be in your heart as much as you can. Yeah. And as my mom would say, she'd say, make sure uh, you want to do it in a good way. In yep. other words, you want to do it from your heart. Right. Positive energy. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Positive makes energy. Sense. Okay. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So Paula Joe is saying you're coming for her birthday. So she's very excited <laughs> about that. She's looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> so yeah. That's well, good. I can't wait to see to see Trinity healing. I mean, yeah. you know, her 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 um, healing rooms and the school mm -hmm. and yes, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and uh, we're going to be there not this weekend, the weekend after doing our big yeah, two day no. workshops. So I'm really yeah, excited. Yeah. About that. I have all kinds of new science stuff, and everything. It's going to be crazy. I'm I'm really excited <laughs> about it. So. Um, 
I just I want to tell you a quick story. Yeah. We went to a, um, a summer solstice drum circle years ago, mm -hmm. and I brought my ocean drum and I'm playing it away. And Marjorie turns to me and says, "You're playing that drum awfully loud." And I said to her, "Yeah, no one can keep the beat for crying out loud." Because being a professional musician, I'm like, "What do you that the time is floating? They're in four, they're in three. And I'm like, come on!" <laughs> so I might not be the best to have it at at a at a powwow or something like that. <laughs> well, no, oh, no, 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 no. You, you have you have to know that. Okay, Native Americans don't do drum circles the way that. I'm going to say new age does drum circles. Oh, okay. Completely different. Completely different. In fact, I, I never went to a drum circle until, right. you know, in the two thousands. Right. Um, our drum circles are powwows and th there's only certain people who are drummers. They've learned how wow. to drum from a, from a very young age and I they see. know how to keep the beat. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the powwows I've Without been to, music, they, beat because you know you can't dance to something that's not a steady to beat that would make the no, dance and great. The is that, you know when i first started going to drum circles and they, they want, wanted me to get up and dance and i said i can't i can't dance to that <laughs> yeah. you know? the, the one number one it's too slow right yeah okay right? and so when when i drum i tend to drum fast because that is or faster than than that but um yeah but there there's also different purposes Okay, that makes that. sense. I mean, right. you know, they're social in nature. Yes, both of them are. But, um, yeah, it's in completely different intentions for those. Okay, all right. So I think if you're there and I'm drumming, I'll be all right. Then I'm okay. All right. You and I will, you and I will keep the beat. <laughs> there you go. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Now we're going to change the subject completely. Yeah. yeah. I know you also talk about... Um, Merkabas, or some people refer to it as Merkabas. Can you can you give us a little uh, explanation about that? Or oh, you have you have one there too. That's good. I have okay. mine here. Whoops, there we go. Yeah, mine like yours are up at the up at the academy because I'm teaching this weekend, and so wow. I have all my, my. This just sits on my desk. Um, well, the Merkaba is our ascension vehicle. It is our chariot. Um, it is an energy field that's quite large. The Merkaba itself is 55 feet in diameter. Wow. That's okay. a big field. Yeah, right? that is big. The closer, the closer field is that bubble that we have around us uh, when we have an activated Merkaba. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that bubble is known as a Leonardo sphere. Oh. And that is... Um, if, you, if you're standing and you have to really, really stretch in one direction or the other... Um, that's about how big your Leonardo sphere is when you have an activated Merkaba. Now, the thing is, is that um, there's probably more people today than there were when I started this work that have an activated Merkaba. Right. Um, right. There was a time when there, there was just a handful of people and um, it, carry, it, it has a lot of energy to it. Mm -hmm. It says that um, it can... Um, send the energy to three small cities. Wow. That's how much energy is in it. Yeah. Huh. And yeah, and it's uh, actually five layers of light. And so it's uh, in, impermeable. So when you have it up for for your protection, right. um, you literally can, can live your life from your heart and not have to have all the shielding because that, that, does, that does your protection for you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I've been doing, I've been teaching these classes since, um, gosh, um, 20, let's see, 2006, 2000, 2004, I think. Wow. Okay. Five, like okay. That. okay. And okay. it's, uh, it's a, a star tetrahedron. Right. Star tetrahedron means that there's two tetrahedrons overlapping. Right. Um, you can, you can kind of see it on this one. It's not quite, um, it's not quite uh, to scale. Okay. But you can see there's there's one one triangle which is a tetrahedron that has the apex at the bottom. Right. And the other one has it at the top. Okay. Right? Okay. Right. And so when you have the two tetrahedrons brought together in this way, that creates a star tetrahedron, mm -hmm. which is the 
Merkaba. Okay. Also known as King Solomon Seal. Oh, okay. Okay. And so that's what our energy field looks like when it's activated. When it's activated. But it's much larger. It's 55 feet at, in yeah, diameter from the hips. Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize it was that big, though. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and you, so, yeah. you teach classes or workshops about that. Yeah. They are. It's um, about learning how to create from your a balanced state between the mind and the heart. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you learn how to create is your to activate your Merkaba. Okay. So you help people activate it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have a sense of mine and I know that the top triangle is spinning to the left and the bottom one is spinning to the right. And well, that's very interesting. Is it interesting? Okay. I, I thought, I thought Polly just, Not very good. no, no, they, you, you actually have three of them. Okay. Oh, superimposed, superimposed over over each other. Okay. So you have one that spins to the left. Okay. okay it spins to the left, and that is the male okay. sacred masculine that okay. spins to the left. Okay. It's also the mental, the mental energy. And then you have one that spins to the right. Okay. And that's the female. Okay. That's in, that's the magnetic. Okay. And so and you have one that's stationary. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So the the, and so the spinning that you're that you're experiencing is yeah. fairly rare. Huh. Um, yeah. And um, do you find that sometimes? Uh, I don't know how to say this. Do you find sometimes that you're? I don't want to say spaced that you space out, but you feel like <laughs> yeah. you're not really completely here. And you're not really completely there. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I call that floaty. I like, <laughs> I like being floaty. <laughs> That's why Polly Joe keeps telling me to take, you know, grounding rocks. I have, I have hematite and all kinds of stuff, which I actually don't have in my pocket right now. So that's interesting. Yeah. So the, the two triangles don't spin separately. Yeah. Huh. Okay, mm -mm. so it's possible that I'm feeling one spinning left and one spinning right, and it's the two different sizes. Right. right. Interesting. Interesting. Right. It's very that's very mm -hmm. fascinating to me. Okay, I'm gonna have yeah, to. Yeah, and they spin, they spin they spin at a different rate. Yeah. The 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 um, sacred masculine spins faster. Okay. Than the sacred feminine. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And they're tuned that, that that is tuned to the earth. Okay. And so in order to, um, that's why, you know, our ascension and following grandmother earth, if you're here, mm -hmm. then, then you are in her energy field. You are at her vibration. Right. At right. her frequency. Right. Because if, if you weren't, you weren't, be, you wouldn't be here. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to have to do a little more meditation and, and see about what I because that, because I can clearly feel the two different mm -hmm. turnings, but I thought it yeah. was two different triangle, the top one and the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very interesting. I'm not saying that it's not possible. Well, I, I, but it, it, yeah. Yeah. It I, usually I, is, it's very rare and it's uh, usually done by medicine people who um, are definitely definitely advanced in their their soul hmm. because they're they're able to be able to do that and still remain here in a physical body interesting okay all right yeah. cool i'm gonna have to look into that a little more but that's fascinating thank you i didn't know yeah. any about that and yeah. hopefully our hopefully our viewers learn some interesting stuff from <laughs> that too so that that's good excellent excellent um we only have 10 minutes left and I have more questions, but <laughs> um, well, we can always do this again. You know, okay. Or, not the only or, okay. It twists my arm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, would you mind sticking around for, to, to oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, good. absolutely. I'm just reading, reading everybody's comments here. Okay. So, um, 
I do, we do have a question um, ahead of time from Ellen, but I just want to give everybody um, some information about the guides, um, at least speaking for myself, and then I'll give you a chance to say about your guides. Um, my guides can be very direct and blunt <laughs> at times. It always comes from a loving place. The more focused the question, the more powerful the answer. Sometimes my voice changes. Um, you always have free will, so the guides are not going to take away your free will, and the guides are going to give you what you need, not necessarily what you want. And that's my group, and I will let you offer any explanation about your spiritual team. Yeah. Um, well, with my team, they literally will – they talk to me. I'm clear audience. That That's my primary way. Um, and But they will occasionally flash me pictures. Okay. And um, yeah, and the thing is, is that um, yeah, be, being a triple fire, I'm a triple sag. Sometimes it can come out rather blunt. <laughs> oh, go oh, good. So we're gonna be a yeah. good team. <laughs> yeah, um, you know. So it's always meant for for the highest good and and from the heart, from a unified field. Right. So right. it's from the heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Perfect. Okay, so the first question from Ellen, as I said, she sent it in early, and you guys can feel free to always send me questions in early. So this is the first question we have. Did my old horse die because his soul contract was up? And it says, why did he have to suffer? I don't know how many hours he was down that night and couldn't get up. Um, was some of it, was it somehow my fault? And why do I have so much loss in my life? So there, there's a lot there. Um, there. Okay. So the first thing we want to say is it's not your fault. So we want you to release the guilt and let the guilt go. And it's not your fault. And um, one of the things that we want you to understand or, or, or think about is we have a, um, if we're feeling guilty and if we're feeling like we did something wrong and we're coming from that energy, that's going to exaggerate the idea of suffering um, we don't feel like the horse suffered a lot. Um, the horse was aware of what was happening and, um, it, animals are a lot smarter than people think, and they're aware of what, what's going on. And because they live shorter lifespans than we do, they, they don't have as much trouble dropping the body as a human does. So, um, his time was up. He was tired and he had enough and you have nothing to feel guilty about. You did not do anything wrong. If you um, meditate and open your heart, you can still connect to his energy. And that is true of all of the, the, the loss that you've experienced in your life. Um, energy doesn't change. I mean, so energy is consistent, but it changes form. So it just moved to a different form. And the 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 Polly Joe said it in last month's class that was just absolute or work whatever this is show, which was so wonderful was is they went home. So it, it's 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 yeah, as sad as it is and as comfortable it is for for you. There's there's joy in that and there's love in that. So. Um, with that, we're going to let uh, Neshi offer an answer if she would like to. Mm. Yeah, Ellen, thank you so much, you know, for asking the question, because um, it takes some courage to be able to, to ask that kind of question, because you can feel how much you are sad. It hurts, right? So to, be, to have that kind of bravery to, to ask the question, which means that you're ready to to face that piece that's meant for you to learn about, okay? Um, and your horse was here for you to be able to learn whatever that is that came with his passing. That it's a, it's a gift, really, that he gave to you. And it's in our human, our two-legged mind, that we tend to spin things out of proportion. Okay. Um, many times you receive those feelings of when when you were you and your horse were together. Focus on that. Yes. 
because he, he, well, I keep calling him he, I'm not sure if it was a he, it feels like a he, um, you had good memories together and to focus on that. Um, he didn't suffer the way that you believe that he did. Okay. And in, in that, um, is what, whatever he brought to you to learn from. He, he's a teacher. He is trying to teach you something through it. And so, um, yeah, it, the thing is, is to open your heart and be, be willing to take in that gift that he gave to you, even though it feels like, um, your heart broke. Perfect. Okay. One beautiful answer. Beautiful answer. Mm -hmm. So here is a question from our, our friend Pauline across the pond. Hello, Pauline. How are you? My question is, how can I stay focused on my desire when some days I, t I feel really low? And thank you with an X. Um, you want to start with that one or you want me to? Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. So when you're feeling low, when you're feeling low, what is it that brings your energy down? Where are you physically? And to, to take note of that. So many times we miss the subtle differences. And and we're going to go back to what I, I just shared with, with Ellen, is that it really is about a space of learning. A space of learning, learning how to shift that energy for yourself so that it's not um, something outside of you that is shifting the energy, but it's it's coming from you, you, you. It's coming from you. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. That was my two cents. Beautiful. We like it a lot. Wonderful. Wonderful. So part of when we're teaching law of attraction is we talk about how you ask and where you're asking from. And you have control over that. Now, sometimes people, when they're thinking about their desires and they're creating, they try to make it into every day at 10 o'clock, I have to do my manifestation mm -hmm. to focus on what it is I do. And we want you to do it from energy. So when you're connected and joyful and happy, that's when you want to think about your desires and the things that you want to create. And when your energy is low and there are rhythms, there are circadian rhythms, which are the rhythms of life. There's a rhythm of night and day, etc. There are going to be times when you feel low and that the times when you feel low, that's not the time to work on your desires. That is the time for you to focus on things that make you feel better, that pick your energy up. So, where you're asking from has an effect on how your desires are manifesting. So when you feel low, your work is to rest and to reconnect and to allow your energy to come back up to a happier place. And then from the happier place, that's when you think about your desires. So wonderful. Thank you, Pauline. I hope all is well over there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rob has a question here. I'm facing a choice on spiritual direction. Should I continue my present direction or change it? <clears throat> Thank you, Rob. That's a wonderful question. And the answer is in your heart. And the answer is that you already have a feeling and have an idea of where you're going and know that when when people are faced with a decision, part of the problem that sort of holds them back is they're afraid of making a mistake. Mm -hmm. And we want you to understand that there are no mistakes. There's new information and new learning. So we would energetically try on each one of the choices and see how it feels. One of them is going to feel better to you. And the one that feels better to you is the one that we would begin to follow. But also pay attention along the way to how it feels. Because if it, if it begins to feel uncomfortable to you, then you want to look and, and potentially choose again. Nothing is written in stone. There, there are no wrong decisions, there are times when you don't make a decision. So make the decision according to how it feels. And if it gets to the point where it doesn't feel good anymore, then make a new decision. 
So mm -hmm. I'll leave you with that. Would, would you, do you have anything you would like to add to that? Well, <clears throat> I know what it feels like to be at those crossroads. I know what that feels like. And when you are making that decision, in the, whether you go left or whether you go right, that if you if you think about it in that spatial kind of way, um, then your mental mind is the one that's leading the path. When you go to the what is going to bring me the, the, the most joy? Am I going to feel a, a sense of a success, whatever that means to you? That's when your heart is leading the way. And I know as the two-legged, that is a difficult place to be in. But that is what we're meant to do here, is, and that's in the growth. It, your, your soul growth is already started because you are in this position to make the decision. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes it's a leap of faith, and that leap of faith is into yourself and not so much into a dogma of whatever kind it is. Mm hmm yeah oh i love it beautiful wonderful margaret has a question i have a team and we are just learning about each other how can i improve the communication and what they really want to say or my next step in learning should be <laughs> wonderful question margaret and um yeah. I, I like the way now she says you're thinking like a two-legged <laughs> <laughs> and you are um it's too much logic brain going on there and 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 more heart and um marjorie and i joke about people who stand in front of the microwave turn it on and go hurry up hurry up hurry up hurry up because you know you can't get any quicker than a microwave and when we find our spiritual path we're, we're excited and we're ready to go and there's so much and we want to learn and we want to connect and we want more and more and more and more. And one of the things that Abraham says all the time, which in the beginning used to make me nuts, is there is no there. Because every time you get there, there's a new there, because if there was a there and it ended, everything would end. Right. Now, we know the answer of having patience, relax, sucks. <laughs> Nobody likes to hear that. So the best thing that we can tell you to do is relax and meditate. Connect more when you can. Um, I was a, a meditation freak when I was younger. I would meditate all the time because I just, you know, I wanted to be more, more, more. And interestingly enough, it didn't speed anything up. So meditate, be outside in nature, do things that are fun, do things that fill your heart. And the guides will sneak in while you do that. And the connection will begin to grow and get stronger simply because you have the desire for that to happen. And when you're feeling good, you're connected and you're allowing your energy to flow, which will, we don't want to say speed things up, but it'll help things along. So wonderful. Do you have a, a comment for that, Neshi? Yes, I do. I do. Margaret, treat them like you treat your very best friend because they are our very best friends. Mm -hmm. They're only here for the best for us. They're our best teachers, our best cheerleaders. They love us in an unconditional way. Mm -hmm. right? And so talk to them all the time like you talk to your best friend. Tell them everything, even though you think, are they already know that? And chances are they do. But when you when you share it with them, you're creating a relationship. And that's what that's about, is a relationship. And so when you're having that conversation, a conversation is one person is talking while the other is listening. And then vice versa. Because they're going to have that part of the conversation where you're listening. And that's where they're going to be giving you insight and suggestions. They can't live your life for you, obviously, but they can they can make suggestions. And it's up to you on whether or not you're going to take that suggestion. Right? Have a conversation with them. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, prescribed 
you know, three times a day kind of thing. But, you know, as, as you're just talking, doing the dishes, you know, yeah, just try it. Cool. Create a, create a relationship. Good. Wonderful. I love it. Um, I don't see any more questions coming up, so that might be, uh, that might be it. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you for everybody who uh, who had questions and everybody who joined in today. We really appreciate it. And big love. And 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 there, can you see? There we go. It's hard to do. <laughs> big love to you. Thank you so much. This has been oh. this has been so much fun, and and uh, I I love it. It's it's great. And um, I appreciate you. I appreciate all you do. I appreciate Star Nations. Um, I'm you know it it it's been almost a year that that we've known each other and um which seems crazy because it seems like i've known you forever but um i i appreciate it so much and thank you for being here and um to all our viewers out there thank you and again thank you for liking and sharing it if you live in massachusetts we are teaching workshops all over the New England area, actually in New England. Um, Marge has my website up there so you can find it. We're doing the big workshop with Polly Joe in um, not this weekend, the following weekend. And um, I think that's good. Marge did a wonderful job as per usual of flying the plane. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and um, with that, I want you, uh, well, the guides want you to know, all of you, all the viewers and everybody that you are worthy and have a wonderful month. We'll see you next month. Uh, my guest is going to be Maureen Mann, and we're going to talk about angels. So that's going to be fun and exciting. Looking forward to that too. So with that, I wish you all light and love, and we will see you next month. Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody.